Life Audio. There's a dynamic of your relationship with God that changes after you've been delivered from bondage. And what we're going to look at today in today's psalm is exactly that. It's looking at this idea of how God delivered Israel from Egypt, and it produces this deep desire for worship that's ongoing and constant. It's very similar to the psalm we looked at yesterday. Today, it's counterpart. I think it's going to be a blessing for you. Stay tuned. Hey there, it's Nicole Eunice from the How to Study the Bible podcast, and I'd love to invite you to join us as we weekly discover a passage of God's Word together. From beginning to end, from principles to practicals, we are here to make sure that God's Word is powerful and relevant to your life. If that sounds like something you're looking for, I would love to invite you to subscribe. You can go to lifeaudio.com and search How to Study the Bible, and we'll see you there. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what He says in His Word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach. And I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand his will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today we're going through Psalm 114 and our devotional reading and studying through the Psalms. And if you're just joining us, the reason why we're going through the Psalms, we've been doing this for quite some time now, is... The Psalms was really the hymn book and the prayer book of both the Jesus and the disciples. And in fact, it is the one book that is quoted the most from the Old Testament by them. And so if we are in this quest to understand the heart of Jesus more clearly, it's a really good idea, at least in my mind, to understand the things that were on his heart as far as prayer and how he himself worshiped God. And so as we read through the Psalms, there's a couple of resources to help you in case you want to dive a little bit deeper. If you go to shehears.org, you can sign up for the newsletter that goes out every Monday. And in that, I include a journaling prompt to help you get the information from your head into your heart. Journaling is a really good way to do that. If you'd like the journaling prompts from previous episodes, you can go to shehears.org and go to the resources page and you can grab the guided journals there. And those guided journals include a link to the audio devotional, the journaling question, a key verse from that day, and then space to actually journal those out. So you can either use those on an iPad or similar device, or you can print them out. And then eventually we're going to have that together as a print resource for you as well. I'm going to be reading Psalm 114, starting at verse one. And today I'm reading from the NIV. When Israel came out of Egypt, Jacob, from a people of foreign tongue, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled, the Jordan turned back, the mountains leaped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why was it, sea, that you fled? Why, Jordan, did you turn back? Why, mountains, did you leap like rams, you hills like lambs? Tremble, earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool, the hard rock into springs of water." So this psalm, with the focus of of it being mostly on the Exodus, it's the second psalm that would have been sung before the Passover meal, according to the Jewish tradition. And so what the psalmist is doing is celebrating, of course, God's victory over Egypt and the provision that they experienced in the wilderness. And then, of course, the entry into the promised land. And so there's a lot of poetic personification in this passage, and it gives this vibrancy to help us And help them really remember these historical events because there's so much value in remembering how God operated in the past to help us indicate how he's going to operate in the future. And so this also invokes this memory of this ancient combat really between God and the waters of chaos. If you think back to Genesis, we we learn about this 
uh, really this sense that God came and he calmed the waters. And throughout, the, especially the earlier Psalms, we hear a lot from David about that, how God brought stillness and calm to the waters. And so that's kind of what this Psalm is doing is evoking the memory of that. This psalm in the beginning, it takes us back to the very beginning of Israel as a nation, and it's bringing to mind the rescue that the Israelites, Israelites had from this Egyptian bondage. If you remember, they were held as slaves by Egypt. And then as they entered into the promised land, God transformed that promised land into this holy place, God's sanctuary, or, or it's called his dominion. And so God made his presence known in a really special way among the nations. And so the language that we see here is very similar to the language that we see back in Exodus, where God is announcing, out of all the nations, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be me for a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. The language, as you can see from Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6, is very similar to what we're hearing in this passage as well. Then the psalmist, who's really acting as a poet, really goes on to personify the waters of the Red Sea. Sometimes it's called the Reed Sea, depending on uh, which historical version you're reading. Um, but the Red Sea and then also the Jordan River, both that were divided in response to God's need for protecting his people or serving his people. And it's interesting because while a lot of people know about the Red Sea, not everybody knows about the Jordan River. So if you are not familiar with that story, I want to encourage you to go back and read through it. And so the Ark of the Covenant crossing the Jordan River, you can read about that in Joshua chapter 4. What he's doing here is he's personifying the sea and he's personifying the river and he's picturing them being fully pulled back in retreat. And he's really kind of pulling on this idea of this ancient symbolism of the waters of chaos and evil. I mean, the chaos would have been representative of evil. And then the creator God, who is the one that subdues and controls. And so there's there's an allegory here that we can really uh, or maybe I guess I should say it's a metaphor that we can really identify with the water. The mountains and the hills of the promised land are pictured as kind of like the animals of the flock. And so the psalmist is provocatively a asking this question, why? Why did the sea and the river flee and the mountains and the hills leap? And then the answer is coming in the next stanza down in verses 7 and 8. Why did the sea and the river flee and the mountains and the hills leap? It was not because of Israel. It wasn't as a result of the Israel coming. It was because of the appearance of the God of the universe, the Lord himself. I mean, if it was just because of Israel, yes, they were God's chosen people. But if it was just because of Israel, we would see those kinds of things happening all the time. Instead, we recognize that it was a direct result of God's presence. It was the appearance of this holy God, the God of the universe, the Lord himself. And so the psalmist is calling on the earth to tremble. And what that really is demonstrating is their fear of the Lord at the presence of the one who can even make the waters flee and the mountains leap. And so he adds this demonstration of God's power and God's provision for his people when God brought the water out of the rock. I'm actually going to read that real quick. This is Exodus 17, 1 through 7. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us our chil and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go out in front of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled, and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? So that's what he's referring to when he's talking about this idea of him bringing the water out of the rock. 
Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll finish up the rest of the psalm. Stay tuned. Once in a generation, a podcast comes along with the power and eloquence to inspire us all. This show will entertain you while you wait for that one. Join two best friends, author and former history teacher John Driver and comedian Johnny W. for hilarious and authentic conversations about life, history, culture, faith, and everything in between. You can listen to Talk About That wherever you find your podcasts or at lifeaudio.com. So as we are summarizing this psalm, it's celebrating God's deliverance from the bondage in Egypt. And it's also celebrating his provision during that wilderness wandering and Israel's entry into the promised land. It's calling on the earth to tremble before him or fear him because of the marvelous acts and the things that he's already done. And the people of Israel are not just like the other nations, but instead they are separate because this this holy place, because of God's presence in their midst. It's not that the people themselves were any different than you, you or me. Essentially, they were special because of God's presence being amongst them. That has an implication for us as well. The reality is, is we can recognize that God's presence among us as believers is here, is present, is providing for us because of who he is, not because of who we are, not because of what we did, not because of what we didn't do, but because of who he is. You know, the life of Jesus and the ministry of Jesus really follow this pattern of the Exodus, this wilderness wandering, and then the conquest of the promised land reminds us that just like Israel, how they look to their past for hope, we can look to the death and the resurrection of Jesus as a place for our hope and for us to have confidence so that we can live in this really uncertain present season that we're in. And just as Israel was God's sanctuary among the nations, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit amongst our hearts, amongst our lives, amongst the body of Christ today, that church serves the same function. And I'm not talking about little C. Of course, there's an expectation that the Holy Spirit is present and working in your little church, little meaning local church. But I'm saying the global church, the big C church. The presence of the Holy Spirit is what gives us hope for today. So given that insight, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to reread starting at verse 1. When Israel came out of Egypt, Jacob from a people of a foreign tongue, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled. The Jordan turned back. The mountains leaped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why was it sea that you fled? Why, Jordan, did you turn your back? Why, mountains, did you leap like rams, you hills like lambs? Tremble earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool and the hard rock into springs of water. Father God, we thank you that you are the God that brings water from the rock. When we are facing situations and knowing that it seems like in the physical, we don't understand what's going on, that you are the God that brings water from the rock. God, help us to have hope in that, in that place. Help us to have hope over those seasons or those places in our lives that are dry, that are barren, that we don't understand how it's going to work. God, help us to have hope because of who Jesus is, the redemptive work that he did for us on the cross, the presence of the Holy Spirit as he dwells in our hearts and our lives and within the body of Christ. God, help us to place our hope there. Help us not to feel overwhelmed with the uncertainty of the world that we live in today, but instead to look to you as the one that is certain. God, we thank you and praise you in all things. Amen. Hey friends, are you needing a couple more resources? I want to let you know that in addition to the resources I mentioned today on the show, I have a whole section of my website called the resources page. There is a free download for a seven day devotional. There are lots of Bibles, journaling Bibles, note taking Bibles. There's my Bible study, She Hears, which is a Bible study about Jesus and the book of John and six women that he interacts with. He encourages, he calls, he equips. And then in that Bible study, I teach 
teach the color method and the color method is designed for you to be able to take that method and use it on any passage of scripture. So I encourage you to check that out if you're finding that you need some additional resources to dig a little bit deeper. I pray those are a blessing for you. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call on your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His. The greatest red carpet you'll ever walk is through your front door. We're Dr. Josh and Christy Straub, marriage and leadership coaches and hosts of the Famous at Home podcast. With a realistic, grace-filled look at the struggles families face today, we cover topics designed to help you become a rock star under your roof, set healthy rhythms between work and home, and build a rock-solid marriage. To listen now, go to lifeaudio.com or search Famous at Home on your favorite podcast platform.